Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. On today's tutorial, I'm going to paint a misty morning scene with a tree amongst the mist and maybe some textured grass as well with some kind of little flower speckles and flecks in there. As usual, I'm using the app Procreate on an iPad. Having said that, you can probably apply some of the techniques to different tablets and different apps. But if you are using Procreate, then you might want to use the exact colors that I'm using. And I've already pre-selected some colors in this section. For each of those codes, there is a value hexadecimal code that you can type in. They're all in the video description. You can type them in here one at a time, press enter, the color will appear up here and you can piece it together yourself. Well, also in the description is a link to my Patreon page and you can download the file there for free to save you time. So like I say, this is an A4 canvas and I'm going to be using a few different brushes. Primarily, I'm going to be using the brushes with an air brushing, the soft brush and the medium brush. These are the brushes at the top. They're not the smaller versions down near the bottom. They are the bigger ones up here. In addition to that, on the tree texture, I'm going to be using within organic, the rainforest. It's really good for the tree foliage. But then for some of the texture in the more foreground, for like the flowers amongst the grass and those kind of textures, I might be using something more like, believe it or not, the spray paints and the splatter or the flicks brush. Also in the video description are links to my Instagram and a Facebook group that has over 30,000 members. So in the Facebook group, you can post your own work and get feedback from everybody else, or you can tag me on Instagram and I get a chance to see it and obviously give some kind of response as well. Okay, with all that said and done, let's get started. So on our layer one, we're gonna to go to our colors. First color on the top row, and I'm just gonna drag that color into the canvas, flood fill it, and we've just got rid of that white background now. Then stay on the same layer. I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to choose this second color along. And on the soft airbrush, so we go back to the airbrushing, soft brush. We'll put it up to about 15% size and 100% opacity. And we're just going to put that now in the very center. Just do it a few times, make it nice and thick. Maybe a little bit above that as well, just encroaching a little bit upward. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we're going to blur it in to about 40%. I'm going to go to my layers and create another layer, go back to my colors, and we have a slightly lighter version of both of those colors. So I'm gonna go for the lighter bluer color. If you go on the color disc, you can see where it is. It is actually quite purple, but it's got more blue than the other color, which you can see is much more up into the red. So we'll go for the third color in, stay on the soft brush at 15% size, but we're gonna put it really quite low on the opacity. at about 20%. And I'm just going to bring this lighter color in a bit more at the top in this section. So we want it darker over here and then lighter up in this corner a little bit. Then stay on the same layer, go to the fourth color in, same settings, but I'm just going to bring a bit more light into this section. So just down near the middle bit now. It's just enough just to give the sense that there's more light over in this area than there is in this area. So the sun is going to be slightly more off canvas. Then I'm going to go to my adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur it in a little bit to about the 20%. It's a subtlety, but if you do remove that layer, you can see the impact that it has by toggling it on and off. Back to our layers, create another layer, and back to our colors. We've used the first four, so we're going to go for the fifth from the left or third in from the right. Stay on the soft brush, but we're going to turn it dramatically smaller, so about 3% size, and we'll keep it at about the 20% opacity. And I'm just going to start bringing in some textures over from this side. So very tentatively, just bring some dashes, I'll zoom in a little bit more, and texture over in this direction. Again, this is on a separate layer, so if we make mistakes, we can erase it and it doesn't interfere with the background layer. So alternate up and down, keep it slightly random, Keep your pencil moving around so you get this natural feel. We can have it building up in intensity in areas too. Now clouds is undoubtedly something you're going to have to practice. I do quite a lot of clouds. Obviously if I do landscape we're going to get sky and cloud features. So there's plenty of chance to practice if you have a go at multiple of my landscape tutorials. It just does take time. So we're bringing this texture across. You can see I'm stretching out my gestures 
just to stretch it out a little bit more. But then what we're going to do is we're going to go in with a smaller brush towards the lower end of 2%. We'll keep it at the 20% opacity. And just on some of these top edges, we can go in, we can just sharpen up some of those details. Concentrate on maybe that top edge of some areas of cloud. You can even add some finer breaks and details in there as well. So we're going to use this color primarily for this section, because if we go back to the colors, you can see it is a warmer color and we've got a cooler color for as it comes over to this side of the canvas. So we'll continue with this slightly warmer color to begin with. So I'm adding some of those finer blobs. Now I'm not copying the exact textures. I always use photo references to get a sense of the color and the kind of feel for what I'm going for, but I don't copy them. I use them as a guide. So it'll get me started and get me thinking, but then I don't copy them slavishly. So you just get an essence of it. And I suggest that you probably do that if you're going to copy from my tutorial as well. So you can see what I'm creating and then maybe just use the colors, use the, the general sense of how to compose it and construct it, and then go off at your own tangents as you feel. So I'm going to create another layer, go back to my colors, stay out on the same brush settings, but I'm going to go to this cooler color and you can see it's definitely more blue. And I'm going to use that now just to go over some of these colors and bring out that blue color. So we've got an underpinning of that warmer color. So maybe it shows more on the edges, but then we get this cooler coming through as well. And as we get over here, perhaps we'll turn it back up to around the top end of 2% or maybe just into the 3%. And we can primarily just use the blue over this side. So it's some kind of combination, maybe in the middle, we get a handover. So we don't really get any of this warmer color and we just end up using the blue. We are on a separate layer, so we can go back to layer three and we can go back to the warmer color. And because it's underneath, if we just want to add a hint more of that warm color, then it's gonna to blend together, but it's not gonna overpower that blue color, which is great. It's just going to have like almost a background setting to that blue. But I am going to continue with the blue on layer four. It's not blue, it's purple, but by comparison, it is more blue. So I keep calling it blue. Put it down to the 2% size. We're still on the 20% opacity. And I'm just going to start adding some more cloud textures. So I'm definitely keeping the movement left to right. but I'm also allowing it to fragment and be a little bit more random and, and kind of chaotic looking as well. So maybe start off with some smaller textures and then you can always clump them together and build them up and to make larger sections of cloud afterwards. But maybe initially you can just start off with some small dashes and specks and just some floating forms that then gather together and make a more dense, more condensed section of cloud. However you feel most comfortable with this. Once you feel you want to build up an area, you could also go into 3% or higher and just start to block in some more areas if you feel it's appropriate. So I'm bringing the blue or the more purple over to this side a little bit as well. It's not going to be as strong as it is over here. And we're going to have more of an underpinning of that warm color. So you can still continue to use both colors across both sections. Just you kind of focus more of the blue over here, more of the purple here, more of the pink color over this side. Some of this is definitely going to be obscured by the tree, but we're going to do the sky anyway. It's always good practice. The more you do it, the better you get. So don't worry about where the tree is going to be for now. I'm just putting this up to 4% uh, size. I'm actually going to turn the opacity down for some areas to 10%. I'm just going to start bringing in some slightly more closer to fluffier, softer sections of cloud. So because we're on the lower opacity, I can just bring them in in a slightly more wispy way softer focused and then start to build them up a little bit. I'm 
and back down to 2%, and then somewhere in the middle, 15%. So you can play around with the different opacities, the different size brushes. As we get further away, we want to be a little bit sharper and a little bit more precise, so we can turn the size of the brush down. As we get closer to that horizon, you're gonna get finer details. It's a little bit more soft focus almost when it gets higher up. You don't see the sharp edges quite as much. Go back to my warmer layer, layer three, and back to that warmer color. And again, we'll just continue to spread some of that more pink color and build up some of these cloud textures. And back up to the blue layer or the purple layer, back to that purple colour. And again, we can just strengthen some of these cloud details. I'm just going to turn the size of the brush down to the lower end of 2%, just to create sharper details where I feel it's appropriate. And then as we get lower down, we're just going to get maybe just some really, really elongated, thinned out suggestions of cloud. We really start to stretch out at this point. In fact, we have another color here, which is quite a nice color. It's darker than the other things we've already got, but it is lighter. So we're going to get a slight softening of this blue as we get lower down, just a slightly lighter version of it. Okay, I'm going to create another layer on top and I'm going to go back to my colors and I'm going to use this lighter color here, which is the fourth in, in fact, it's the very middle color. I'm going to put it up to about 10% size, keep it low on the opacity. So I'm going to put it down to about 5%. And I'm just going to go over this bottom section a few times just to help soften that in a little bit more because it's easy to go over the top. And I think just this little bit of softening in there make a difference and if I just show you so toggle it on and off you can see perhaps the effect of that and if you feel like you've just gone too far which maybe I have and I can go to the end symbol on that layer and I can play around with the opacity of that layer so I'm going to put it somewhere about the middle we may come back to that and just refine it a little bit later but we're going to move forward so we're going to create another layer and I'm going to go to the organic brushes and the rainforest brush I'm going to go to my colors. I'm going to choose the second color in on the middle row. I'm going to put the brush at around 4% size and I'm going to leave it 100% opacity. And I'm just going to start building in the top edge of some distant trees that may be on like a hillside. And sometimes I would use the soft brush to start to do this and then we would find other ways of doing this. But just for once, we're going to keep experimenting with different methods, different techniques. This is a slightly quicker way, perhaps. And we're just building that all the way across and then we can just continue to fill it in and it's going to merge with other things anyway. And it just, it quickly gets us to the point where we've got a nice texture and we've not had to think very much about it, which is sometimes exactly what you just want. Then we can go to the third color in and we're not going to change anything. We're just going to mix it in over here and it's 100% opacity still, just for over in this section. Then I'm going to turn it down to about 60% and start to bring it over a bit further. It's about the halfway. Then I'm going to turn it down to about 30%. And then I'm just going to bring it to about the three quarters of the way. And then I'll turn it down to about 10% and just bring it a little bit further along there. 
and maybe just a bit more at the bottom of that section. Go over it a couple of times. It's only at 10%, so you can afford to just go over it a little bit anyway. Now with the smudge tool, and we're going to set the smudge tool to the medium brush. And because all of that is on one layer, which is great, we'll just turn it down to the lower end of 2% and about 80% strength. It's not opacity, it's called opacity on the slider, but you need to think of it in terms of how strong it is now. So we're just going to use that now to push up in some areas, because if you zoom in, you'll see that that's a slightly strange kind of look. So we're going to use the smudge tool to push it in the direction that we want. So you've already got some texture as a guide, so you can work with what you've got, but then just start to bring it together a little bit, make it look more like a uniform edge rather than two separate layers and two separate colors. And you can always turn it down a little bit more, in fact, so really at the lower end of 2% or even 1%, and you can really be precise. The smudge tool is, is super useful, and when I'm doing my own really quite elaborate paintings, then I often use the smudge tool almost as much as I use the, the brush tool. So we're just going along, fine tuning that edge a little bit. And then anything below that point, we can just use the smudge tool at a bigger brush, maybe like three or 4%, depending on how much you can control it and just circle that in a little bit, just to further blend in anything below that point. Back down to the lower end of 2%. And again, I'm just going to, with the lower end of 2% on the brush or the smudge, just further refine this edge a little bit. Maybe even 1% is quite useful. So I did use the Rainforest brush just to get us part way there, just to give us a sense of texture. I think it's easier to start with the texture and then leave the bits that you like and then manipulate the bits that you, you want to further. It's better to start with that sometimes, but you can see I'm pretty much obliterating the edge of that brush tool. So it doesn't actually look like the Rainforest brush edge anymore, really. But it helps us get us so far, so that's fine. So I want to soften the impact of that layer, in fact. So I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur it in a tiny amount to about the 2%. And it just softens it, knocks it back a little bit more. And I think that works better. Go back to our brushes. And we also have this first darker blue. So I'm going to use that a little bit. And it's set to the 4% size and 10% opacity. And I'm just going to start bringing in in this lower down section, some of this texture to create a sense that there's layers, there's texture in and amongst this foliage. We've got a hillside with various different tree elements here, so it shouldn't be too flat looking. And we can bring that along here as well. So we are on this blue color, but it doesn't matter. We have still predominantly this pink effect over on this edge, but we are bringing some of that slightly darker blue across the whole thing. And it's a subtle texture, but it definitely has a big impact. In addition to that, we're going to go to the last color on that middle row, and it's super low opacity at 10%. In fact, yeah, that will do. And we're not changing the settings, so we're still on 4% size on the rainforest, and we're still at 10% opacity. And we're just, in addition to those dark colors, just bringing in a hint of maybe the light impacting the top edge of some of these trees and things growing in this edge as well. If you want to be a bit more precise, we can turn it down to 3%. And you get some slightly narrowing of that detail, and that can work well as well. I'm going to turn it up a little bit on the opacity to about 20%. And again, stay on the 3% size. And I'm just going to use that to bring out a couple of extra layers of texture here, just to make them a little bit more pronounced, but I don't want to do too much of that. And it's going to be obscured slightly by the mist anyway. So, okay, back to our layers, create another layer to our colors. And we're going to do exactly that. So we're going to use the second in from the right. We're going to use the soft airbrush. We'll go back to the airbrushing, soft airbrush at the very top. We're going to put it at around 10% size and around 15% opacity. And we're just going to start building in from the very bottom. We want to obscure and you can start off confidently at the bottom. We want to get rid of all of that texture. It was only there just as a fill anyway. But we can start building it in a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is reduce it down to 
and I'm just going to draw a line across and you can see it snaps, it's very low opacity. So maybe we could turn that up even more to about 30%. Drag it all the way across just so you can really see it and you can see it there. And that's going to be our marker. There's going to be a really low lying sense of mist with this color. And that's going to be our bottom edge where the ground level is. But then beyond that, we're going to have a more diffused version. So we'll go back up 10% size, 15% opacity. And we're just going to soften in that edge, especially over this side, in fact. So I'll zoom in a little bit more. So I'm going to make it less defined on this side. And as we come over here, we're going to soften it in a little bit, but not as much. Something like this. Okay, back to my layers. I'm going to create another layer and back to my colors. I'm going to use the first color on the bottom row. I'm going to put it at around 4% size and low on the opacity at around 10%. And a little bit underneath that horizon line that we did create, I'm going to start just bringing in a darker tone. And I can bring it all the way down. It is going to get continuously darker as we do more anyway, but certainly it's going to begin to bring in that darker effect. So I'll just turn the opacity up to about 30% and then maybe the brush size up to about 10%. And you can see I can just start to bring in this darker color so it fades as it gets further away. Something like this, go back to our colors, got this second color. And again, I'm gonna bring it in from the bottom. I'm not gonna start a new layer, just keep the same layer. Bring it almost up to the top. I'm just gonna press more lightly. I'm really going for it when it's lower down. I want to build up the strength of it there, but slightly less when we get higher up. Back to my colors, third color. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit now, so about 7%. Again, around the 30% opacity, so you can really stay I'm starting to build in this green now at the bottom. And again, when we get nearer the top, I'm gonna to press more lightly, not go over it as much. Like this. And again, stay on the same layer, back to my colors. We've got this darker green and we'll build that in near the bottom a bit more tentatively this time, not too much of this. And then last color that I'm gonna do this with is this dark color and it's a really dark color. We are going to add texture over the top of it, but it just really wants to reserve that darkness for the really foreground feature here. So we're going to disrupt and, and break that up. So don't worry too much about that. Now, looking at my palette, I realized at the beginning of the tutorial, I'd forgotten to put my tree colors on, but I've put them on now. So you may notice that they weren't there at the beginning, but if you've downloaded the color palette or copied the codes, then they've always been there just as I'm going through the tutorial now live, from my perspective, I've just added those two colors. So I'm going to use them now. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to go to that first color of the two new colors. So not the one at the end, but the next one. And I'm going to use a medium brush. I'm going to turn it to about the lower end of 2% and I'm going to have it at around 50% opacity. And I'm going to start bringing in a tree. So you can decide on the kind of tree. It's more like an oak tree, I think. You experiment with your tree shape, see what you think suits. So I start at the lower end of two, but I will take it down to 1% as we get some of these branches that go up to near the top of the tree, they're gonna get thinner and thinner, aren't they? And once you've got the main structure in place and you, you've fairly content and happy with that, then we can start adding some of the, the foliage to it as well. So in terms of that, we're going to go to our organic brush back on the rainforest brush and it's around 3% size and higher on the opacity for the foliage, so about 50% on the opacity. We can just start bringing in some of that detail. In fact, I'm going to turn it down further to about 2%. And we can just start adding in the blocks of foliage and then we can always go back in and add some of the branches where we feel is necessary because if you add a big block of dense foliage like this then there's going to have to be some branches to support all of that the logic of it would dictate that that was necessary so we can even turn it down a bit further we can really get like a, a sense that some of it is in the mist and you combine that with pressing lightly then you're going to build up that effect and then maybe as it gets further up the tree, then it's less 
affected by that mist, but still on the back part of the tree. So as we get slightly further away from us, it's gonna be more subject to the atmospheric conditions. So you're gonna get a lighter version. And then we can turn it back up 60% or beyond if you want to create a slightly sharper look at the top. Again, it's not gonna be affected by the, the mist quite as much. You will get a bit more clarity. So you could really go for it, make a darker, more crisp version of it up there. And back down again, if I want to do some of this low lying foliage. Again, back in there with the medium brush. So we'll go back to the airbrushing, the medium brush, one or 2% size and 50% on the opacity. And we can really go in there with the branches now, bring it all together a little bit more. Now, another aspect of working on separate layers is that you can play around with the scale at any time. And I feel like I want to make this tree a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna to go to the transform tool and I'm just gonna increase the size of it, make it a more dramatic feature in our landscape. I can reposition it a little bit. I quite like the idea of some of that light on the sky showing through some of the gaps a bit more. And again, back in with the organic rainforest. I'm gonna put it a little bit higher, so I'm gonna put it 70% opacity, keep it at the 2% size, and just really go in there and solidify some of these textures. Alternate between that and the branches, airbrushing. Okay, um, on that same layer, I'm gonna to go to my eraser, make sure it's on the soft brush, put it up to about 5% size, 10% opacity, and I'm just gonna start, I'm just going to erase a little bit. So in addition to that, I'm gonna to go to my darker of the two blue colors here, use the rainforest, again, 2% size and 70% opacity, and I'm just gonna build in a few points of darker tone. So when we've got this side of the tree, so not the back part, but the definite front sections, perhaps they're just going to be a little bit darker, more vivid in tone. And if we long press on the eraser and go on the eraser, you'll see that now we also could use the eraser with the rainforest brush too, but I don't want it 100%, so we'd want it around the 60%. And around the 2% size and I can just go in there if I want and I can just create a bit more in the gaps if I feel it's appropriate. Bear in mind I'm probably obliterating any of the branches here so I'd probably go back in with the medium brush and just clarify some of the branches if needed to. But sometimes gaps work just as effectively as the foliage so think about space, negative space and light that will get to shine through it really will be effective so we'll go back to the medium brush airbrush and i just need to bring out some of those branches again perhaps go back to that other blue as well Okay, I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to do something similar, but in the distance. And I just want to turn the opacity of that layer down to 50% straight away. And using my medium brush on the first of the two blue colors, so not the outside one, but the one in, I'm just gonna do another tree 
really quite small. I don't need to get too much into the detail over in this section. And then I can go to my organic rainforest brush and turn it down to the lower end of 2% and just start to create some texture on that tree as well. Then if I go to my eraser tool and I'm going to put it on the airbrushing soft brush, put it at around 5% size and 10% opacity. And I'm just going to start taking away from the bottom of that tree and just having it really start to merge in more with the mist. I want it to be a subtle tree that is obviously there still, but it's, it's kind of disappearing into the mist like that. And we're going to do something similar with this tree too. So we'll go back to layer nine and same brush settings. We're just going to chip away a little bit at the bottom of that tree. Just have it slightly blended more with the sense of mist. So we'll go to the top layer, create another layer, go back to our colors. And we have used some of these colors. So we're going to go back in now with this first gray color. And I'm just going to have it on the airbrushing soft brush set back down to 2% size and about 30% opacity. I'm just going to have it blending with the bottom of that tree. And I'm just going to have it going off either side. So I'm creating slightly a tuft texture. I want it to be the suggestion of grass in the distance there. Create another layer. Go back to our colors. We're using this second color again. We've already done this pretty much, but we're just kind of bringing it out even more. There's no harm in, in building up several layers for the same effect. So again, this is at the 2% size and 30% opacity. But I'm just going in there and I'm just creating breaks in, in the surface, more texture. And we'll just keep building it up in a similar way. Create another layer, back to our colors. That's the third color in. And we'll do something similar with this too. Okay, so I'm going to go to my brushes and I'm going to use the spray paints and I'm going to use the splatter and the flakes. Probably start with the splatter, but we'll do it on a new layer. So we'll stay on this green that we've just been using, but we're going to put the size up to 10%. We'll keep it on 100%. And if you see it in the foreground here, you can start to notice it. So I'm going to experiment a little bit with some of this effect. I'm going to start adding it in this section over here in the background. And I'm going to bring it further down a little bit as well. I'm going to go to this end color over here and I'm going to bring in some nice textures over here too. Then with this second color in from the right, again with the splatter brush, I'm putting it up to about 12% size, maybe just a little bit less than the opacity, so about 90%. So I can just start texturing in, lightening up, especially in this foreground area. I just want to bring more different elements into this bit. And then as we can go through all the different colors perhaps. So I've got this initial color again, so I'll use it a bit more. So I'm gonna reduce it down because we're getting further away to about the 8%. And I can just perhaps just bring a little bit more of that in the distant area as well. So it's not quite as vibrant as that, but it's still in the mix. I can just soften that top edge a little bit. Just about a general effect, really. It's not going to be super precise, but it, it gives you an essence of that kind of texture. So I'm just going to go back a couple of layers. I'm going to go to this layer eight and using the same splatter, I'm going to use this darker color and I'm just going to start bringing it in underneath everything, especially in this foreground. Just start to ramp up the dark impression of things as they get really close to you. And then obviously I don't want that going too far off. I want it just for a foreground feature. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my top layer, create a new layer, back to my colors, back to my second color here. I'm just gonna also go back to my 
airbrushing and soft brush, reduce it down to 2% size and 20% on the strength. And I'm just going to create a little bit of a sharper cut off here as well. Just want to soften all this in a little bit more and then turn it up to about 4% and just soften some of this in a little bit like that. And I feel like this low lying mist could be ramped up a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to go back to that very first color that I used for the sky. In fact, I'm going to bring it into that land area. So I'm going to do it subtly with a 2% size brush and a 5% opacity. And I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit, just smaller increments. And it's going to go behind the tree. So when you get to the tree, stop and then just continue. Just going to go to my top layer, create a new layer. I'm still on the soft brush. Back to my blue color here. And it's really low opacity at the 5%, but I just I feel like the tree's got a little bit lost there. This foreground one, it's okay to have missed, but I feel like it just needs emphasizing a little bit more. And in addition on this top layer, I'm going to just make a few downward textures and lines with the green here. So I'm going to stay on the soft brush. I'm going to put it down really quite low to 1% and really quite low opacity to about 10%. So with this green, I'm just going to create some lines here. It gives the impression perhaps that we have some grass, something that, you know, makes sense of all this texture and all these little dots. So if we have the actual lines that connect it, maybe I'll turn it up a little bit more to about 20% and just give the hint that we've got some lines here that connect all this together. You don't need to do too much of it, just a suggestion. It's only a subtle feature, but it can just make sense a little bit more of what we've got there. Uh, back to my colors. I really like perhaps this third color in and with the soft brush still at 20% and small 1%, but I can just start building in couple of really standout features in and amongst the flowers, perhaps that just stand out. So they don't need to be particularly refined or clear, but I'm just going to make them jump out a little bit more. I think they just need to be a bit more prominent in places. We've got the general splatter and dispersal of that texture, but just by creating one or two really vivid, sharp contrast points, I think that it just sells that idea a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to leave that tutorial there. I could definitely spend longer on the sky and refine it further, but I think we've got the general sense of it. I hope you've enjoyed following along. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done it already. Press that bell notification to ensure you do get notified. Check the links in the video description for anything you think that's relevant to you, and I shall catch you back here soon. See you later.